All right, good afternoon. How are things? So um, today we uh, move on to the next topic, synchronization. That's another important topic in terms of making sure multiple, when you have multiple streams, how they synchronize and all those things, right? So before we go, I like to do a little demo of what I mean. The first is, right? So this is a PowerPoint presentation I just picked up from the net, right? So you saw some animation here, right? And I can try to play it back again. Um, so you saw something rolling from somewhere, and then after some time, these things sort of came in, the, the, the text in the bottom came in with, with certain kind of stuff, right? The synchronization is basically trying to figure out how to place these things in both spatial and temporal domain. What it means is in the spatial domain, I want this text to happen here, so how do I specify, how do I make, make it through my system to say this particular object should come in this uh, location, this particular object should be here, and so on and so forth. Temporal sense, it means that I want this animation to happen, which means that I have this globe and then you know every aspect of it is kind of timed. And after this happens, after a certain amount of time, I want this to happen. So how do I specify those? How do I make sure that things happen the way I want them in the device that you're looking at, right? And this is an example of a synthetic object. There's no realism to it, it just added based on the, the author's uh, requirement, right? So there's nothing which says that after this globe happens, this should happen after 25 seconds or so. So you, do, you don't really know how late this should happen. But you, you may not like it if this happened before this event or something, but it depends on what you're trying to do. So, so synthetic, there is no real world notion, preconceived notion that you have of how these things should happen. And, but you still want to be true to what the authors wanted, right? So that's one aspect of uh, synchronization. The other aspect is more on realistic objects. So you have to watch me here. Um, you can't hear me. Hello. Right. So you see my. So there's there's two things here. There's a there's a video and there's a, there's my there's the audio, right? Hello. I try to exaggerate it so you can kind of see the the stuff. Hello. Right. You you they are not synchronized properly, right? So you want you so we're trying to see what that is and how we can quantify those. Um, the other way this could have happened was Hello. Okay. So in one of them Hello. you hear the audio first and then you see the, the mouth move. Um, in the other case You see the mouth, mouth finish and then the audio happens, right? Um, the main difference between this and the, and the previous synthetic model is this is realistic, right? So we as a human beings expect something to happen. So in this particular case, you expect out of your experience throughout, throughout life that when, when, um, when, when, when you see a person's mouth moving, you expect some sound to happen. Um, and you expect the delay in which you expect to hear, right? So you expect that if, if I was staying like you know, a couple of miles away, then you understand physics enough, you know, your brain understands physics enough to know that it's pretty far, so there's, there's, a, there's a delay. So, but if you're, if you're fairly close to me, then you expect certain things. And if it, if it doesn't happen the way you expect, then it's kind of annoying, right? Um, so at some point, it, it becomes, it goes from being barely noticeable to annoying enough that you don't like to watch this stuff, right? Um, 
they, so if you watch TV and stuff, they violate this all the time. Sometimes they, they even violate it to a point of being annoying, right? So if you ever watch like sports and stuff, if you look fairly close enough to the the, the guy speaking, right? Uh, most of the time, you, you see them like the, them talking and the audio would not be sort of related to what they're trying to do, right? Um, and, and most of the reason is, you know, they, they, they use multiple devices to capture this stuff. Like for example, in this case, right? So I'm talking through this microphone, and this microphone uses Bluetooth to broadcast what I'm saying to that particular camera, right? So there is one scheme going on here, which is encoding my audio and sending it to that device. Then other devices synchronizing, you know, synchronizing and adding this stuff. So the delay added from, from my headset to that, to the, you know, the, the Bluetooth processing is not known to the phone, so it, you know, it has some trouble synchronizing those. In the case of the sportscaster or, or, or newscasters, you have one camera pointing at pointing at them from some angle, and you have the audio ha happening through a separate channel, and they're trying to synchronize both those. And it, it may or may not happen all the time, and, and so you don't notice it if, if they're far enough that you don't look at their face, but if, it, if they're doing a zoom in on you, you tend to notice those things. And um, in some cases, you know, you, you, you're, you're so interested in, in hearing what they're saying, you don't particularly pay attention to those stuff. In other cases, you notice this stuff. So if you're playing, instead of me saying hello, if you watch this as a, as a, bat, in a football game or something, right? And you see there's somebody running towards the goalpost, and you, you hear touchdown before that person actually goes, right? You may or may not like those stuff. Or you see the person, you see visually, you see the person is actually across the line, and then a little bit later, you hear a touchdown, and you're trying to do this stuff, right? So that's that's the that's the general notion of uh, of of the the synchronization here. It's very very important because um, it's not that interesting to talk about a single stream, right? It's not that interesting to just watch video without any audio. It's not interesting to just watch audio without video. It is interesting in its own sense, but you you want to add more of these more streams and more more kind of objects, and how to keep them synchronized. It's it's not. It's not trivial, but it's, it's a very important aspect of it. Well, the, um, in, in the case of the audio, the other thing I missed, um, I didn't say was, for audio, even within a single audio, you have a stereo channel, right? So your ear knows sort of, if you hear a, a, a stereo object, right? Stereo is basically trying to, to give you a sense of where this particular person is. So the, the idea here is if I'm listening to a stereo sound and I recorded something where somebody happens to be here, somebody happens to be here talking. If things are done right, I should have this view in my head that I'm listening to somebody who's over here, somebody's over here, right? So I'm trying to use the spatial differences between these two people to give me a sense of how, this, how the sound is. Now, if they're both not synchronized, then things go really bad, right? So I need certain phase difference to know where, where somebody is talking from here or somebody is talking from here. But if they're not synchronized, then in my, in my mind, I cannot place where this object is. Because you know, spatially, I expect the object to be here or here. But now it, it's all confusing, and the, and the thing becomes uh, uh, really complicated. right? So even within the uh, audio, if you have a, a stereo stream, then they both have to be synchronized within a certain amount of uh, period uh, and for this to happen. It's not possible to keep them completely synchronized for a number of reasons. Um, one being that when you have multiple events and you're trying to deal with them uh, in single time, you're you're get, getting to relativity theory kind of stuff, right? So how do you make sure the two things are exactly synchronized? Is yeah, um, so you can you can go to a certain amount of synchronization, but not all the way. And luckily for us, again, our human brain cannot tell some of the differences, and that's what we're trying to understand. So if we're trying to understand how what is how much you can tolerate. So that, that that lets the system not have to try to make them completely synchronized. And then we're also going to look at how do you specify these things? How do you specify how these things are synchronized? And how do you compose those things? And that comes more into play, especially for the synthetic stuff, because somehow that person decided that the, you know, the, the, the globe has to go a certain way, the text has to go a certain way. Now, how do you specify this? How, how do you add those stuff, right? How many of you created uh, animations in PowerPoint? So, you, so for people who have done that, you kind of sort of know this stuff, right? So you, you go into some sort of editor, you have to choose an object, you have to choose something to say, this object should, you know, the in, in, in transition, out transition, what happens when it's doing, and all those things. And say, so essentially, how do you specify those stuff, right? And many of you realize that 
if you've done this stuff, right, it's not that easy to to go about that process, right? You have to kind of get a feel for how these things look, how 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 to set this up. It's a pretty laborious process, um, and there, there are a lot of other factors coming to play, right? So you you may be setting up in a machine where things were fine, but if this machine was not powerful enough, this uh, animation that you saw may look so jerky that it's not worth it. So, um, and and we go through that process on on trying to figure out how how it happens, right? So, so you get the general idea of what, what, what this is, what, what, what we're trying to do, right? Um, so, let's do that. So, the, like, like I mentioned, that there are, if you, if you talk about synchronization, there are three different notions of how these things have to be synchronized, how these objects have to be synchronized. The first notion is the notion of content relation, which states that how two objects are related in in certain time, certain way, right? So you can think of this as links. So, for example, I could have made that content relation point as a as a um, um, pointer to some somewhere else on the slide. So if I click on the slide, it'll go somewhere else. So, so all, all it says is that is related to say a web page or something else. So it's not saying how they should be presented to you. It's not saying where they should be shown on the screen. It just says that that particular term content relation is related to something else somewhere. So these two are synchronized, right? But so web documents are a good, good example of synchronized. There's no time relationship. There's no how they should be shown on the screen relationship. It just says that at this point, this is related to that particular document and he can go somewhere so, somehow, right? Um, the other notion is a spatial uh, spatial synchronization, which is which is the um, what we sort of looked at. So it, it basically says that I want this object to be here and I want this object to be here, or, or so on. And how to present those things uh, is is concerned with the spatial um, spatial uh, relation, right? Spatial synchronization. So you want these objects to be where they are, because if you're not synchronized, then I may want this, say, this animation to sort of go on top of this thing and go away. If it's not synchronized, it might end up actually going like this, right? And it looks like it, it's it's off, right? So you're you're trying to say how spatially these things should be and where they should be and so on, right? We're not going to spend too much time on those because those essentially boil down to how you how you develop your um, the the player and how you develop your how the things are sent, right? The more interesting concept is the the temporal uh, component, which tells you how these things are related in the in the time basis, right? And so that so that that goes into the the all the things we talked about. Um, so there are. Um, so before we go in there, we need to uh, understand the notion of. So it's also called this lip synchronization because that's what what what, what I was showing. You know, so my lips are not synchronized with, with the audio, and people tend to notice those. So that you know, it, it came out of those stuff. So there are two kinds of objects, right? So one is time dependent objects, and the other ones are uh, time independent. So if you're looking at text, if you're looking at a printout, those are time independent because the uh, whatever you have on the printout is what it is. Forever, right? So there's there's not much much going on, but as time dependent stuff is, you have these the, everything else we looked at, you know, video and audio and all those things, um, where there is a specific time thing should happen, right? So you expect me to say hello when I open my mouth and say something. So there's a there's a time component in, in that stuff, um, and we we are trying to so time correlation synchronization concerns with between the time dependent stuff and also between with, between um, non-dependent stuff. So in the, in the case of, of, of that particular video, if I was doing a closed caption, you expect that when I open my mouth, um, you may show hello as a closed caption. So you want those that particular text to be synchronized to when I, say, when I open my mouth. So you want the video to video at the point that I'm opening my mouth to be synchronized with the audio when I'm saying hello to the fact that this text was displayed at that right amount of time, right? So they saw all uh, synchronized um, together. And as, as I pointed out, so if you want, so what, what you're really trying to do is you have, let's say, two or three events happening, right? You want all of them to happen at the synchronized in a precise time. That, that's what you're trying to do, right? But when you're trying to build this on a, on a system, like computers and stuff, 
you have to serialize them in some sense, right? You can, so unless you have some sort of a parallel system where everything can go in parallel, you have to serialize them in some sense. So that affects how you can, how you can, how closely you can make this happen, how closely you can make them look all synchronized and happening in the same time, right? So if you want to show that video was playing here and the audio was playing here and the text was playing here, you have to somehow figure out how to show the video, right? Independent of this audio, independent of this text, all the processing have to happen so that they can happen on the screen at the same time. Whereas in real system, you have only one CPU. So the CPU has to deal with the, the video for a little bit, has to deal with the audio for a little bit, has to deal with this, the, the, the text for a little bit, and then the output has to look like they all were happening at the same time. So that, that's, that's the challenge, right? So that means you had all the different layers that you talk about have to coll collaborate to make this happen, right? So at the, at the CPU scheduling and, and all the operating system issues have to play a role so that the scheduling can happen in such a, such a fashion that you can perform these operations, but at the end, you, can, you have enough slack to make them look like they're all happening simultaneously. Right? If the CPU allocated too much time to the video and not enough to the audio and the text, then on the output, you have the video ready to go, but the, but the, the audio is not ready to go, so you can't, you can't do the stuff. Right? So somehow you have to tell the operating system that there are three different events that you're trying to schedule, but they're all interrelated. They all have the deadlines which are interrelated to each other. So your scheduling has to make sure that when the video finishes the right amount of work, audio finishes the right amount of work, the text finishes the right amount of work, they all have to be done in a certain fashion so I can keep merging these things. And if I miss something, then I need to figure out how to catch up, how to make these things uh, go forward, right? The, um, so you can think, so at, at that level, you are mostly concerned with, with these little independent, independent streams and how, how do you schedule them and all those things. You can think of them at the, um, Middleware are higher level kind of primitives where you have multiple streams and you're trying to um, trying to um, keep them all all in sync, right? And and then and then at the application level to make them all application level, you know, make sure that you can specify which should should be synchronized with the other other component, right? So it's an end to end uh, end to end issue with the, on a particular machine. If one of them fail, then you notice the, the, the th things are being out of synchronization. Right? And the thing to remember is, more, for most of the time, these, these are very hard problems, right? And uh, for, the, for the most case, these things, the, the, the TV producers have been dealing with these things for a long time, and they're able to, to proceed with that because they have enough compute power to, to, to make these things happen, to, to synchronize these stuff, right? And the, the, the nice thing with the television is they don't do anything that they're not, they don't have the resources to do, right? So if you have a TV production unit, they know precisely what they could do, and they don't try to do anything else that they, they, they cannot do, right? But in the more general concept, more general system, it's very hard for me to know what my cable, capabilities are, because if I'm streaming some video to the, the three laptops over here, right? I have to sort of know how much are uh, this full laptops here, how, how much you're able to synchronize, how much you're able to do all this task, right? So I, as a producer, have to send this stuff to all of you, and if I expect the synchronization to be happening at, at the client side, I don't have as much control, I, don't, I have no control over what you're going to do. So I have to specify it in such a fashion that you still get a good, good quality experience, even though I don't control the whole thing, right? Whereas in the TV production system, the receivers don't do anything. The receiver, your TV basically shows whatever was sent to you. And the producer adds you know, all kind of animations and stuff. And if they can't do animation, they don't do the stuff. So, so you, you, you get what they sent you, right? So that's the, this one of the important things to remember when you're talking about multimedia-based system, right? Um, and you'll, you'll, you'll see that how this comes into play on different kind of systems. So if you're talking about like a video chat, right? When, when two people are talking in a video chat, the person who's sending has no idea how you're going to receive it. So they may be doing some stuff that may not be noticed on the other end, right? And, and we'll, we'll see how that, how that plays out, right? Um, so 
the, the next, next stuff is the notion of um, the specification, to say how these things should be, should be synchronized. And there's a lot of different ways to specify how these synchronization should happen. So in the, in the examples I, I talked about, you want the audio and the video, in, in the case of the, the hello thing, right, to be synchronized. And how do you specify those things, and how do you specify the tolerances and stuff um, is, 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 the, is, a, is a big, big challenge. Um, and you, you, in a lot of sense, you, you want to capture this at, at, the, at the capture point. So when I'm capturing this video, I need to know what the synchronization should be. I try to maintain those to make, make this end to end. So in the case of the camera stuff, uh, you know, when I'm capturing this, I know that I'm capturing audio. I know I'm capturing a video, but I need to capture enough information such that they can be, they can be sent to you at the same time, right? The other thing you, you, you may not, it may not have come through on the on the audio video stuff. Is when you when you talk about a video like a TV program, right? You have the video and you have the right. There there are two independent kind of streams, right? So if you if you look at this as independent object, right? And your camera is capturing this stuff, right? And let's say it it had to drop a frame because it it something happened, right? So it couldn't keep up with the stuff, it, it dropped a frame or something, right? And let's say you're doing this stuff on the audio on the separate thing, you know, sampling and it's collecting this video, right? If you let these things go on for a, for a while, at some point, the errors keep adding up, right? So the, the video here, let's say you're doing 30 frames per second, right? And this one, let's, let's assume that this is perfect. So this is doing what it's supposed to do. And this is doing 30 frames per second, but it dropped from 30 frames per second to 29.95 frames per second, right? right? Which means that it missed one frame, right? So if you're synchronizing the 30 frames per second video with the audio, right? What, what it means is you may have the audio, so this is the frame and this is the corresponding audio for it, right? This is the frame corresponding audio for it, right? And it's eventually, since you miss this particular frame, some you know miss some frame, you will end up end up in a point where you have a video and the audio is no longer synchronized to what the frame is, right? And 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 they tend to diverge with time, right? And that's a real problem because all this all the the hardware that you you tend to purchase are not designed to capture 30 frames per second all the frames all the time, right? Something something's happened. They couldn't keep up with it. So now you have these independent errors adding up and how do you synchronize them, right? So it'd be nice if when you're capturing this stuff, you could you could tell that this frame is related to this audio. So somehow I tag these two, right? Somehow I tag these two, right? So I'm no longer dependent on the fact that these are happy, they're supposed to happen for 30 frames per second, but I'm synchronizing them while I'm capturing it so that even if you receive them, even if something is lost, I know which how to synchronize them back, right? So that's 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 the that's that's the goal. If I can synchronize them, if I can add this information at the capture point, then I can kind of try to maintain it throughout the system rather than calculating it based on I expect 30 frames per second. So 30th frame should be one second on the other stream, and and that tends to go bad. So you're trying to make sure that you can do this. Um, so you, you add this information on the uh, uh, along the way, right? Um, there is. So this is possible in the case of, especially in the case of real events like, like the video, video camera stuff, where um, the, the synchronization is given to us, right? In the case of the, um, the, the artificial stuff, like the, 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 presenting, the um, PowerPoint presentation, it's, there is no such thing. So you have to define what those things are, and that, that's probably what some of you who have done these things notice, right? You have to specify the synchronization points. And you have to make sure that they look smooth and stuff. And if you look at the specification in the PowerPoint, you basically say, I want this particular object to be shown at you know, this particular second. And you probably go through iteration after iteration trying to make sure that it looks all fine, right? And then you give the specification. Um, for the most part, whatever specification you give may not be exactly how things are played on the, on the other end, but you get the flavor of it, right? So on, on that way, even, even, even going back to this stuff, right? So one of the, one of the things that, so you can, you can change some things, but still make them look good, right? So here is, here is one case where the TV programs do this all the time, and you may not have noticed it, right? How many of you noticed that when you watch a TV program, and when you watch the original program, right, let's say it takes hour, right? 
takes hour with some amount of advertisements. But when you see the rerun of this a few years down the road, you see a lot more advertisements, right? Right? You may, you may notice that the advertisements have gone up, and yet the programs finish at the amount the same amount of time, right? Like for example, like you know, say Seinfeld, right? I don't know if you guys seen Seinfeld, right? The original Seinfeld, I mean, Seinfeld has been gone for a long time, right? So the original one was, let's say, for half an hour, and the reruns is also for half an hour, but the reruns are practically, feels like it's advertisements with a little bit of program thrown in, right? Do, do, you, do you ever wonder how they are able to um, keep both of them the same? So there's a synchronization here, right? I mean, when they captured the stuff, there's a synchronization between the audio and the video. And now they also have the same stuff, right? So what they, they don't edit the stuff, right? They don't cut, the, cut any scenes because then your experience is different. You know, you, you may have laughed at a joke and now it's gone, that's not what you want, right? So I want the same content as I had before, now, right? I want them to be synchronized too because I don't want something to be different, right? I don't want the person to, um, you know, make the audio faster, right? Make the audio go faster so you don't, uh, but you have to do this stuff, right? So do, do you know what they do? They make them actually go faster, right? The, the, in the reruns, they actually make them actually go faster, right? So they, they make the frames go faster, right? So what happens is if you make it go really fast, your voice become very squeaky, right? You might have seen, you know, when you see the, the, the fast forward in the old tape days, if you, if you do play, fast forward of the play, you hear this squeaky noise, right? Um, and if you do a fast forward on the video, like I, I look like I, I go like this, right? So, you, so there's a point when you begin to notice that I'm moving like this and you notice it's, it's unrealistic, right? So you expect me to write A like this, right? You don't expect me to write like, like that, right? And you want the audio not to sound squeaky, right? So they, 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 it's an art form, so they, what they have to do is they have to speed it up enough where your brain compensates for what happened. You don't, you don't actually notice the stuff. But essentially, what you're, what you're seeing the, in the reruns, reruns have, are not similar to the one that you saw, right? I mean, the, the sound is different. The person is talking at a higher pitch because things are going faster. The objects are moving faster because the things are the thing. But you have to do it at, at, at enough pace where you don't notice this stuff. You, you, it, it looks like things are normal. It looks like things, you know, all the, all the, all the gravity stuff seems normal to you. If I drop a cup, it seems to take the same amount of time. But on the rerun, it's actually taking less time because it's, it's being fast forward, right? And so that, that's, that's the stuff. So it's synchronized between those two events. So you don't notice anything is going bad. And, and the speed up is at a pace where you can't notice a difference. But the, the, the player at this point is not playing what was actually sent. Or in this case, the player is not playing what was shown on the first day when the actual episode happened, right? And we have been, I mean, I, I've never seen anyone complain about this stuff because if you do it right, it's still synchronized, things are fine, but they're not, you're not actually seeing what you, what you thought you were seeing, right? So one of the, the, before we talk about all these things, you have to define what these different objects are. And, and one of the ways to define that is a logical data unit. Um, so the, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a fancy word to basically say what, what I'm talking about, right? So in, in the case of the, the PowerPoint slide, I may say that the, the background is a logical unit and the, and the globe that I had was a logical unit. So if I define those things and I can say, what I want is this logical unit to sort of animate and go along, along the screen and so on, right? So that's the, that's the notion. Uh, and the, they can be fixed or variable depending on what you're, what you're trying to do. So if I'm, if I'm showing an audio, uh, audio video, um, if I know what the, how, how, how long the stream is, then I can have a fixed size. Um, whereas variable, I don't know precisely how, how much the thing would be, right? So if I'm, if I'm doing a video chat or something, I don't know what's gonna happen um, further down the road. So I, I have to specify the video as, you know, like 
after you finish talking, I should say something. So I don't know how long you're going to talk, but you know. So I, I say it in more relativity, relativistic terms. But it's the fixed LDU model. Um, so if you're taking something of the video, like like you know, video camera kind of stuff, you know precisely how big the how long the, the segment was, and fixed basically you say you know that that particular segment, right? And again the the the, the synchronization can either be intra-object or intra-object, right? So intra-object, the idea here is it's, bet it's within the same stream, right? So if you're, let's say if you're showing animation, right? You're showing animation here where the circle, circle sort of goes all the way over here, which really means that you have to show, if you're doing 30 frames per second, so 30 times you have to show where the object would be, right? Which means that let's say the, each of this is 40 millisecond, right? 40 milliseconds um, maps to the time that each frame has to be shown, right? So when you when you're showing 30 frames per second video, what you're really doing is you're you're showing each frame 40 milliseconds, and then you have to show the next frame, right? So together you reach one second, right? So your system is trying to show a frame for 40 millisecond, and when it's done, it'll show the next frame and that for 40 millisecond. So you're, so it's not just you have to schedule, you have to show 30 frames within a second, but each frame would have to be shown for 40 millisecond, right? It's not acceptable to show 30, so it's not acceptable to show 30 frames per second as um, some sort of like this, right? Let's say this is, this is one second, you don't want to show all of them here, so they, they all have to be synchronized across the, the plane, right? So if if for some reason you couldn't keep this exactly 40 millisecond, if it tends to become uh, one of them is smaller than the other one, right? Then it'll look jerky, right? Because the, the ball is supposed to go like this, but now it'll look like it'll come here, and at this point it'll stay longer, and then he'll go to the next one and say shorter. So if you, if this one became longer and this one became shorter, it looked like the ball kind of went up here, and then it kind of hovered here for an extra little bit of time, and then it kind of went through this faster, right? And, and so how do you prevent those stuff, right? So you want to make sure that these things are displayed at a certain pace that you don't notice the stuff. The inter object is you're trying to mix these things, and again, if, if you had used the iMovie tool or other tools, they let you play, you know, mix these the audio and video and stuff. So you, I can say I want the audio to play. So I want this this you know, this LDU for an audio, right? So this is the, me saying hello. This is me saying hello, hello and video. Then you kind of compose these things across the different objects, and I want you know this is how I want them to be synchronized. So hopefully in this in this sense, time is on the x-axis. So that means that I want from this time to this time. I want this audio stream to play. This time to this time, I want the video stream to play. But they are both playing simultaneously, so I want them to be synchronized inter-object. Each video will be inter-object inter based on these principles. Each audio will be inter-audio based on this principle. And when this finishes, I want this P1, P2, P3 to play in, in sequence and, and, and what have you. Right? And this is another, this is another problem form of synchronization that you may have noticed that I tend to struggle with, right? Which is, I'm pushing this stuff, and um, so in this loop, I expect to push this button, and something there happens, and something here should happen, right? And you expect a certain amount of delay, and frequently, you know, I go too fast or it's too slow, right? Um, so. So the, the, these problems are much harder when you're trying to do this live, right? When you're trying to synchronize these things live, especially for video conference and stuff. So that's one of the things I want to show you in the next class. Things are a little bit easier if I if it's not live, because I can play tricks, right? Because for example, the thing I, I talked about for the uh, program reruns, right? So if I know that it's going to be, uh, if it's a recorded program, I can tweak these things a certain way such that you may not notice what's going on. Whereas if I'm doing a live stuff. I, I can't play those games, right? Because what happens is in the, in the recorded stuff, if if the original hello took this much time, in the new playback on the rerun, you only took this much, right? As long as it's not too squeaky for you, you're happy and everybody's happy, right? But in the case of the of a video chat, right? I can't do this stuff 
for one reason, I don't have the future. So I don't know what you're going to say, right? So I have to wait till you finish saying this word, and then I have to do this processing. So I, I don't really have much time to do this kind of a processing, right? Um, and any a delay I add, you tend to notice, right? So in, in the case of the of of the uh, of the Seinfeld stuff, you don't notice this stuff because it's all recorded, right? But if you do your video chat, we'll see in the in the next uh, demo, you're expecting some sort of a feedback, right? And so adding, if, you, if you're missing synchronization, all those things, you tend to notice this stuff because you, you're interacting with the other person, right? So if I'm, if I'm, so forget about the video chat, right? So if I, if I say something, if I show this something on the screen, and I, so uh, if I had a pointer, I had to show something on the screen, right? And if nothing happens and you're, not, you're watching live, then you tend to notice it more because I don't have time to fix those things, right? Um, Whereas when you, when you have the, the, the synthetic synchronization, things tend to be a little bit easier because you kind of know ahead of time all, all, the, all the stuff. So even if you miss some synchronization, you can keep, keep up with the stuff because you know the, all the entire future, right? And that, that's part of the same. So, um, to, so you t traditionally go through two phases. One is the specification phase and, and then the presentation phase. So uh, the specification can be done during the capture or during the, the time you create a PowerPoint. But essentially, you specify what has to be done. And then you, 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 you solve the problem of how to show it the way you want it. Right? Um, so um, so what, so, so that, that's what you want to do with synchronization, right? But, but practical reasons, sometimes you, you, you can't achieve 100% synchronization because of the way things work. So if, I, if I'm talking about this particular case, when you have this, the video, audio, and, and, and the other streams, all synchronized in a certain fashion, and if some things get missed, the video processing takes more time, or you don't have enough stuff, when you're trying to show them, you may not have the particular object ready to be shown to the user, right? And that leads to the problem of blocking, right? The idea here is I have I have to have things synchronized. So I need I know I know I need all these things to be shown to you, but at this particular time I don't have the con the, the the particular stuff I was supposed to show to you. So what do I do, right? So it may so happen that you see you I have the video, but I don't have the audio, right? So how do I fill in what audio is missing, right? Do I kind of block the whole thing, or do I let the video go and sort of make up the audio and 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 more, right? Um, so you, there, there are a number of ways to deal with that depending on what you're trying to do. It tends to be a little bit easier for video. So if I lose a video frame, I can make up a video frame, right? How would you make up a video frame that you just lost? What's a simple uh, way that you can make up a video video frame? Right, you have a, one frame. You sort of lost this one, and you have another frame, right? Yeah. Just repeat a frame. I'm sorry. Repeat one of the frames. Yeah, you, you repeat the frame, right? You can you can repeat this frame again, right? And if you're doing 30 frames per second, you 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 probably won't notice, right? Or you can sort of do an average between if you have the future frame, average it, and all those things, right? Um, it's not always true that you won't notice. So when would you notice this? When you notice that something was off? When the future is completely different, right? But for the most part, normal human beings cannot see it 30 frames per second or something. So you can repeat the frame, right? And also you'll notice it if you have to do this for a, for a while, right? <coughs> if it's one frame, you probably don't notice it. But if you have to do it for a few number of frames, and then you have the next frame, then this frame and this frame are sufficiently Different that you tend to notice a little little movement, um, so that you can do those, right? Can you do this for audio? Can you repeat what you um, LDU here, right? So LDU here, it's not clear as it, it's a it's a frame. So let's talk about seconds, right? So let's say in audio, what we're talking about is my my speech chop them at a little bit of time, right? So let's say H happens in these three. When I see hello, right? These three is the time it takes for me to say hello, right? So uh, H. So this is you know the leading, middle, and all those things, right? So if I miss this stuff, what can I do? 
better just to have nothing than to have the same sound repeating over and over again. Yeah, but it's actually very hard, right? You can't even leave it empty because people notice. So if you leave the stuff, right? So if it left, left, left the stuff, right? So you'll have the ascending part of my H, descending part, but not the one in the middle, right? And so you'll hear, I mean, I, I can't pronounce it, but you, 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 you hear, it, it doesn't sound like H, right? Um, and the smaller this is, you won't notice it, but if it, if it tends to get larger, because we are, because we depend on audio much more than we, we do on video, because we, you know, video is much more higher, higher processing, so we're not, we don't depend on video as much as we depend on audio, right? So audio, you better have this stuff, because if you don't, this may not sound like H anymore. If I have the initial and the end part, but without the middle one, it may sound like a different one, right? Um, so you don't want to have a blank, but what you can have is not that trivial, right? So for the most part, these systems try to not mess with audio, right? In, and, and the reason is if you have control over doing these things, if, you, if you're doing this as a scheduling process and you're running out of some CPU cycles, you would rather let the CPU cycles run out of the video, not for the audio, because audio, if you, if you miss something, you, you hear a silence that you notice, you, uh, you can't play the previous one because unless the previous one is part of what you're supposed to get, uh, you may not happen. So for the, for, you try really, really hard to make sure that the audio can be played, right? Um, so, so depending on, on what you're trying to do, you may you may play one of these games to sort of mask over what, what's going on and, and, and move the stuff, right? The other thing that they're trying to do is, if you suddenly, if you didn't get frames for a while, and then you start getting frames uh, 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 of a certain fashion, you sort of trying to buffer it and then sort of smooth it out, right? Um, sort of think of the, the, in the case of the TV rerun, right? So if, you're, if they're running it faster for a while, and then suddenly they, they could play the original thing, if they, if they added both next to each other, you'll suddenly notice that the previous one you were hearing was squeakier than what you thought it was, right? So you kind of move it slowly so that the, so if you want to add the rerun and the original run right next to each other, you don't just cut and paste next to, next to each other. You sort of move it smoothly so you don't, your ears don't get a chance to figure out that it's, it's, it's doing the stuff, right? You can actually try this stuff. You, you can actually record the rerun and then the original program play next to each other. You'll, you, 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 sh you should notice that the, there's a difference, right? So there's a lot of work trying to figure out how, how people recognize uh, synchronization errors, right? And so one of the, one of the cases here, so in, in this case, there's that person, he's saying something, right? So they, they, they take the person in three different uh, locations. So the first one is, um, what do they call it? Head view, this is the shoulder view, and this is the body view, right? So essentially you're, you're zooming out, and they're saying the same stuff, right? So you're trying to see if you can, so you're changing the synchronization, like what I was showing. So essentially you're, you're taking this video, and then either playing the audio ahead or before what the, what the person is saying, right? And you're change, changing the amount of time it takes that you're doing. So what this means is, if you, so on the x-axis, you have the, the time, the skew, which is centered in zero, this negative here and positive here. Zero means that audio and video are exactly synchronized as how you intended them to be. And if you go this way, um, negative skew, skew is video is before audio, and positive skew, skew is audio is before video, right? And so, if, so each of these markers shows the milliseconds. So this means that um, audio is before video by 40 milliseconds, and, and so on, right? So it, it goes up to 320 milliseconds. And on the y-axis is the error rate, right? So this is subjective stuff that you ask people. And you want to figure out how much people perceive the error, right? Clearly the, there is error here, but you're trying to ask people what they perceive, right? And the, the different lines are, the red is for the, the head view, the gray, which I'm not sure you can see here, sort of in here, is the shoulder view, and the, the black is the, the body view, right? And you do the studies to try to figure out what is acceptable. So you would like these things to be as close to zero as possible, because that, that means it's zero error, right? So in this particular case, users notice uh, error even at zero of 10%, so we sort of have to ignore the stuff. But you notice that the, the black one, the body view, is much more um, 
deeper for a while, right? So that means that till about 120 milliseconds to about minus 120 milliseconds, you sort of don't notice that much difference compared to the, the, the center, right? <coughs> if you're doing a long <coughs> shot. But if you're doing a phase shot, things are, I mean, about eight, eight, minus 80 milliseconds is what you can tolerate, but the, you, you, you're less tolerant of the positive side, which is the audio before video, right? And this is because we, we know physics, right? We know that light travels faster than, than sound. So in our mind, we are much more forgiving if you hear the, the video first and then the audio, because you know you think that's, that's normal, because for some reason, the, um, even though your brain says that you're, you're, you're so close to me that I shouldn't see this effect, but we've seen this effect before. You know, you, we know lightning and thunder and all those things. But we've never seen a case where you hear the sound first and then the video, right? So if I can actually see his mouth and I, I see that I can, I can hear before I can see the mouth move, I find it much more annoying, right? So these sort of graphs help figure out what is tolerable and what is not tolerable. Um, so you see this stuff all the time on TVs, right? TV, pro, TV news readers rarely read news like that, right? For, for a reason, right? They don't want, it, it's not that the TV uh, news readers face is ugly or something. It's just that they can't keep their synchronization good enough that you tend to notice this stuff, right? So you, you, you only have some minus 80 millisecond. You have no, uh, no chance over here. So you'd rather keep them off at a distance. And the way you do that artistically is to have all kind of like trees or uh, some, some things to um, hide the fact that you're not actually keeping them closer, right? Um, and you, you see that even more on the on the on the sports uh, casters because they're they you know they're so small and nobody complains because you don't really want to see their face right but if you want to see the face close then you, you run into the problem right I mean I, I didn't mean in the sense of like you know, you know they're, they're hideous or something but you want to watch the game right um, and 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 you also so they do, they do studies of what is acceptable is you know more subjective stuff of um, so you know, so if you if you look at the except you know, it sort of goes up very sharply, right? So after a certain amount of delay, you you tend to notice this stuff, and then the error rate is ranked rank pretty high. You can look at a subjective notion of um, what is noticeable, what is what is you notice it, but you're tolerant, and what is uh, not uh, unacceptable, and you, you you draw this stuff. And again, you have to do lots of studies like this for different kinds of audio and video to try to see what is uh, synchronizable. Uh, and in the general consensus is for lip synchronization, about 80 milliseconds plus or minus is what you can tolerate. Even though for close-up view, if you do the video, uh, video ahead of, say, the audio ahead of video, eight minus, you know, plus 80 milliseconds may, uh, uh, may be bad, but you, know, you, you sort of tend to the thing. Um, transient up to minus 160 milliseconds is sort of okay. So when, you, when, you're, when your system is dealing with this stuff, it has to be aware of this stuff. If you go beyond this things, you suddenly notice a, a big, big jump. Otherwise, you're sort of okay. And there are other cases where, where this comes into play, right? So if you're talking about a video chat system, and the other synchronization you have to do is a mouse, right? So if I'm, if I'm talking and I'm, I'm showing something on the screen, right? So if I'm using my mouse to show something, and the other, other side, so now you're getting two streams. You're getting one stream of my audio, maybe my video, and the other one showing where the mouse is, right? And you are much more tolerant, turns out you're much more tolerant on, on this kind of stuff because it's never clear what, where my hand ought to be when I'm talking, right? So when I'm talking, you expect my mouth to, to correspond to the sound, but you, you, you don't really expect that. If I say, let's look here, you expect that I'm pointing exactly at the same time when I say hey, here, because these are two different, you understand that you know my mouth is not the same as my hand, so you, you're sort of more tolerant, right? You'll be kind of annoyed if I say it's here and I, I never make attempt to you know show the stuff. So so that that's the that's the thing. And again, if you plot plot the, the graphs for this stuff, it looks sort of different. But if you the, the main thing to remember is the the times here are much larger, right? So even even a second of non synchronization is still still okay as compared to um, as compared to the the lip sync problem. And so in general, the you know, minus 500 to 750 milliseconds, either way, is sort of acceptable because, because of the nature of how these things are operating. Um, so there are, there, 
you know, so there are lots and lots of studies on, on the different things. And, you know, for example, for the, um, for the digital audio, the, the maximum jitter is um, in, in nanoseconds, right? And so when you're, when you're trying to, uh, so stereo audio, the maximum allowable uh, skew is 30 milliseconds. And many systems only deal with like plus or minus 11, 11 milliseconds because otherwise you, it throws you off on what, what you're, you know, you're spatial, you're not able to place the spatial stuff. Uh, whereas if you're, um, if it's a, a background music kind of scenario, then then larger amount of time is okay. Um, so I'll, I'll stop with this and continue with this on the, on the next lecture, but the, the conclusion so far is you have to figure out what system you're trying to build, and you have to figure out what is tolerable, and if you don't understand this stuff, you cannot synchronize these things, right? Uh, in, in the case of the, the example I was talking about before, uh, 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 a remote um, concert, right? You have to really understand these things because there you have certain expectations. As long as you, you can play with those expectations, you're good, and, and that's, that's where we are. Right? I'll see you on Monday. <laughs>